Alrighty, welcome back, everyone. We just talked about SEC and Florida State and Clemson more than more specifically, and we talked about how if they don't go to the SEC, they might just be out in an island trying to figure out what their future is for those two schools, which would not necessarily be the position they expected to be in or want to be in by any means. So that'll be a fascinating thing to watch. We'll break that down, and I think some news on that will come here pretty soon, honestly. Um, but let's start to break down Morgan Scaley, and he did a huge thing. Utah did a huge thing over the last couple of days. They made him the head coach in waiting over there in Utah, and that's a really huge deal um, for a number of reasons. And the biggest one, obviously, is just who this guy is. Um, he is one of the most respected, one of the best coordinators in the game. Um, he's absolutely remarkable, has been at Utah for quite some time. And Every single year, it feels like that defense is really hard to deal with, and he's a huge reason for that. So, obviously, a huge thing for that. But also, what happens to Kyle Whittingham at this point? You usually don't put a head coach in waiting unless that coach is, you know, looking at the door just a little bit, or at least thinking about what the next step is for him uh, after coaching. And you hate to see Kyle Whittingham go, but at some point, you know, all of this was going to start to happen. He is 64 years old and probably wants to spend just a little bit more time with his family and not be out on the recruiting trail as, as often as he is. So obviously a fantastic career uh, by Kyle Whittingham, not coming to an end right now, obviously, but um, this is a huge move for them. Uh, Kyle, or excuse me, Morgan Scally has been at Utah for pretty much his last 24 years. Uh, he started there as a defensive back playing under Kyle Whittingham in 2001 to 2004. Then he was an administrative assistant in the athletic department in 2006. He went back to uh, join the staff in 2007 and has been there ever since. He went from safeties coaches to a recruiting coordinator to coaching special teams to the defensive coordinator. So this is his program. There's no two ways about that. There is nowhere else that this ki this guy wants to be, and he's been there pretty much since he's become an adult. So obviously there are incredible amounts of ties here and definitely someone that has a ton of respect. He was a finalist for the Broyles Award, which is the best um, assistant coach in the country award that's given out every single year back in 2019. Just an elite, an elite play caller. Uh, had the best uh, run defense in the country that year, and has done just incredible, incredible things, to be totally honest with you. Finished second nationally and led the uh, Pac-12 in total defense and back in 2019, and they have not taken much of a backseat over the last couple of years. He's done just incredible things with so many players across that roster. I mean, the biggest one that stands out to me is Sione Vaki, a guy that was playing both ways, but when he was on the defensive side of the ball, it was a special thing to watch, and that was a special athlete, and although you're working with special athletes, you still got to put them in winning positions, and Morgan Scally and Kyle Whittingham just did an incredible job uh, of that during his career. So obviously this is going to be just an incredible thing to watch, not only because this is a really, really cool thing overall. You know, uh, seeing a guy take over for his alma mater is always a very special thing. I love that Kirby Smart is at Georgia right now. I love that Brent Key is at Georgia Tech. And there are so many other examples of guys finding their way back to their university, being their head coach, and it's always such a cool thing to watch. So that beside is really, really cool. But even more unlikely is you're taking over for the guy that coached you while you were at that university. That is obviously next level special. When you talk about these two guys, they go back about as far as you possibly can in the world of college football, and they have immense amount of respect for each other, and that's why Whittingham was really the one that made this decision. This is obviously something that happens a lot with, you, when you have someone like Kyle Whittingham, they tend to have a little bit more say in these type of things. The same way, it's not, maybe not the same level, although he holds a lot of weight, it's kind of the same way Nick Saban. If he signs off on someone, you're going to believe him. So if anyone in that Utah program or in that school, if Kyle Whittingham says that Morgan Scally's the real deal, you believe that Morgan Scally's the real deal, point blank period. And it's obviously a very interesting thing for a number of reasons, but specifically because we haven't seen this in quite some time. This is something that used to happen pretty consistently, to be totally honest with you. Um, not consistently by any means, but definitely more often than it does now. And it happened kind of because of a rule change which said there are some recruiting restrictions that surround coaches where they can only visit guys, uh, go on the recruiting trail at certain times of the year. They said that would apply to head coaches in waiting. So essentially every school just said, we won't name the head coach in waiting. We'll just have that 
that be known in-house, the Jerome Moores of the world. That was a head coach in waiting. There's no two ways about that. In fact, it was in Jim Harbaugh's contract. So essentially, he was a head coach in waiting without having that title. But at the end of the day, this used to happen quite a bit. Jimbo Fisher took over at Florida State right after Bobby Bowden's career ended. And things went really well. Uh, he went 83-23 and 23 over eight years, led the Seminoles to three ACC titles, beat Auburn, obviously, in 2013 for the championship. So that one was a outright success, a huge success. And obviously, that was uh, the peak of Jimbo Fisher's career, where some things went not so well after that. But obviously, a remarkable career for him and a great decision by Bobby Bowden and everyone over there at Florida State. Another one, Mac Brown named defensive coordinator Will Muschamp as the head coach in waiting back in the day. But Muschamp ended up leaving for Florida before Brown stepped away from the program. That was one where I felt like Mac Brown probably should have stepped away a little bit earlier than he did and handed the reins over to Will Muschamp, but obviously it was a totally different world, a, a total hypothetical, which would have been very interesting to see play out, but definitely a lot more things wrong about what was going on at Texas there than the head coach at that point, but that's beside the point. That can be an entirely different segment. Uh, uh, Dana Holgerson, another one that was hired as the offensive coordinator over at uh, West Virginia before taking over for Bill Stewart when he resigned. So obviously a ton of stuff that has happened over the last little bit where this isn't the craziest idea in the world by any means, but it is wild in today's college football because you do have some implications on the recruiting trail and that poses a really interesting question where you're at the point of the recruiting trail where a lot of the work off campus is done. Um, a lot of the visits to the homes, whether it's, you know, sometimes you'll get some later on in the cycle where you're just trying to lock down a guy really late. Um, but other than that, a lot of the recruiting that is going to be happening throughout the next couple of months is going to be on your turf. It's going to be at Utah having guys to visit for games and things like that. So this doesn't necessarily affect him recruiting wise for quite some time, um, just to be totally honest. And it's definitely something at least until the end of the season, that really will be a non-factor for the most part. The question is, what happens right after the season? And that's why when I look at this at face value, it's hard for me to sit here and say that this isn't uh, Kyle Whittingham's last year. Now, I don't know anything on that front, and obviously I have not spoken to Kyle Whittingham over the last uh, 48 hours, but it feels like this might be it. Um, it feels like you wouldn't do this at this point if the plan wasn't for him to walk away at the end of the year. And obviously, I would not love for that to happen because this is one of the best coaches in the country and someone that I think is just absolutely remarkable, has done incredible things for the game of college football. So you'd hate to see him go, but this does feel like a move that kind of sets themselves up to let Kyle Whittingham play out his last season as head coach, you know, do all the things that he wants to do, hopefully win another conference title, go to a playoff for the first time, and ride off into the sunset, and then hand the keys over to Morgan Scally and see what happens. Um, so it, it's obviously a very interesting thing. Kyle Whittingham has been an institution in this sport for longer than I've been alive. <laughs> I'll be totally honest. This guy, I think, has been at Utah longer than I've been alive. So he is Utah. He is the institution of what that football program has been for so long, and him moving on would obviously be a very uh, sad thing, but when you're bringing in a guy that not only has seen him as a head coach from the defensive coordinator position, but has seen him as a head coach from the player perspective, has seen him as a head coach from the athletic administrative perspective. So this guy knows everything about what Kyle Whittingham is about. He knows everything about the way that he wants a program to be run. And more than anything else, he knows everything about what Utah is. And that's the most important thing when you're coming into a job that you're taking over for someone that is just larger than life for that program. You got to know what you're getting into. You got to know what everyone around you wants, especially the fans and especially the you know support staff around you. And Kyle Whittingham has taught him that over the last 24 years, really, um, in some form or another, has taught him what it's like to be a good leader of men, a good coach, and deal with all of the outside stuff that you have to deal with now a little bit be uh, better than some other people have. So this is obviously one of those moves that caught me a little bit by surprise just because I hadn't seen something like this in quite some time. But at the end of the day, if it was going to happen any, anywhere, if it was going to happen to anyone in Morgan Scally, 
there was no better place or person to pick. Um, this guy knows everything about what it means to be a Utah Ute, knows everything about what this program is about, and it's because he learned from the greatest coach that's ever coached there. Um, so it's obviously a move that I really like. It's one of those moves that's just a really feel-good move. You feel uh, great about this guy being able to live out what is likely a huge dream of his, which is coaching his alma mater, being that head coach, and it's something that's always really cool whenever someone takes over their alma mater, but especially when they take it over from the guy that brought them in to that place and you know, showed them how special that place is. It's always really cool. Um, so this is obviously a fantastic story. It'll be fascinating to see what the timeline on this is. Uh, all is, you know, if Kyle Whittingham doesn't have the year that they want to have at Utah, does he come back for another one just to ride off into the sunset a little bit cleaner? Or is this the last year bar none and we'll find out at the end of the season? So it'll be interesting to watch, obviously. Uh, I have immense amount of respect for Morgan Scaly, and I think he's going to do just an incredible job when he takes over as head coach. But for the time being, it is still Kyle Whittingham's job. It is still his to... Uh, uh, his team to lead and he does an incredible job every single year and I think he's going to do an incredible job this year I think they will likely be in Arlington at the end of the year and from there it's just up to them what they are capable of doing this year so obviously huge news in the future of Utah but for the time being let's talk about the present and let's talk about the Big 12 media poll right after this break we have so much to break down but Utah is right up top where they want to be. So we'll break that down right after this. So stick with us. 